So uh, this is a demo to uh, show you how to do uh, use R Studio to do data analysis for the serial dilution lab. I mean, part of the exercise will also be in the open book exam uh, tomorrow. So. You said tomorrow. So we are having it tomorrow. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> so why did you? Well, last week when we actually you said you didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so first you download the, the zip file and save it. And in my case, I it goes to download folder. Okay, the file is downloaded. Uh, I'm going to unzip it on on Windows and Mac. This unzip uh, process is a little bit different. So you want to make sure you unzip the file. If you do not unzip it, uh, you cannot read uh, the data file. So, the serial dilution lab, I uh, downloaded the zip file. So for the exam, I'll probably also put this zip file in the question itself, and you download the zip file from the question itself. So in my case, if I uh, on Mac, if I double click, it will unzip it. On uh, Windows, you probably have to choose the option, uh, something called extract all. Um, make sure you extract everything. Uh, so once you extract everything, uh, you want to make sure to use RStudio open uh, R code. Uh, in this case, I'm going to open an R code called serial dilution. There's R code here. So I'm going to open with RStudio. I'm, I'm right clicking now, so on Windows, uh, I'm open with R Studio. So, uh, I'm going to move along. So, if you have question, uh, uh, we have to uh, try to fix it later. So, once you have uh, <coughs> opened the file in R Studio, and first. We, you need to make sure our student know where to find the data file. In this case, I'm going to go to a session, set working directory to source file location. So, okay. So what uh, you can actually see at the bottom, see that's my uh, current directory, uh, download R serial downloadion. So that's where I extracted the zip file. So, but how do I know I'm in the right place? Uh, so we can see the file in my current directory. So the way to run code in R Studio, you just highlight it, then click run. You're going to run the code we just highlighted. Uh, so this just to see all the file in my current directory. I see the, at the bottom, I see uh, the, my current R code, and also two CSV files, that's basically uh, Excel, data file for the uh, serial dilution data. One is for hemocytometer, the other one is for plate counting. So, and <coughs> uh, just in case we also clean up the current working directory. Uh, this is unnecessary if you have never used R Studio before, but if you are running multiple scripts, sometimes the, they can conflict with each other. So you if you want to make sure there's no conflict between different programs, just clean up everything in the memory right now, and then we start from clean uh, uh, plate. So, and then we're going to read uh, the hemocytometer data first, and click run there. And then you on the on my right hand side, you see <coughs> uh, read CSV, basically read that uh, uh, CSV data file. The TB is just my shorthand, say, table. I read everything into an Excel table, except this is not in Excel, I'm using RStudio. On the right-hand side, I see uh, that's everything has been uh, loaded into RStudio right now. Uh, if I click this, uh, click the, the TB, you will see the, uh, that's the hemocytometer counting result. So uh, all six group on the strain ID and OD value and your dilution one, dilution hemocytometer counter, dilution 2, dilution 3, dilution 4. Right, that's, we, we did this last time, but this time we are do, yes? How did you get, like, what did you click on? I click the, there. Click here, it goes there. No, before you even open this, like, what did you click on, on the Moodle website? 
Oh. There. Uh, so, so I'm missing, so the hemocytometer data are now in RStudio, and if you want to uh, uh, look at what's inside of this uh, table, I, what I call TB, you can run a command called STR, uh, STR short for structure. And there, it's at the bottom, we will see again the same thing. So this table has six observation, basically means six rows. If you look at the table in Excel, you see there are six rows. And how many columns? That's the 13 variable. 13 variable means 13 columns. It's a vertical line. And you can also look at the, the data. The sample ID is called INT, that's for integer. So I basically run the command str right, to get there. So, so those are all integers since the Counting is just uh, right, discrete. <laughs> we we don't count one point five column, I guess. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, but then you you look at the OD value. That's when it's called numeric. So that's a floating point. That's a decimal point. So this one has one point nine five. So that's the optical density value. So, and. The rest of the code is going to calculate the concentration of the hemocytometer and also calculate the average. Uh, I'm going to just highlight those and just run them. That's calculating for each dilution. And then uh, we are going to calculate the average. And I'm actually using a for loop. Uh, instead of doing it one by one like the previous one. So I'm going to just run this in a for loop. And on the right hand side, is, uh, I will have the calculation down there. So those are the, the concentration for each dilution, and then that's the average, average HC for hemocytometer, and standard deviation. Uh, in fact, uh, I also calculate the percentage of a standard deviation, and you can see the standard deviation in some of the group is pretty uh, big, like 150% this one. So. This one, this group have just like a 20% error. This one has 150%. So it, it actually shows the, the fluctuation in your, in your experimental result. So, okay, so, and then we can uh, do a plot. This is actually important because you want to put this in your lab report. So in plot in our, uh, it's just like in the simple English word called PLOT, but then you have to specify some uh, 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 ways to tell them how to plot. So uh, COL is for color, XLAB, that's for x-axis uh, label, and likewise YLB is the label I put for the vertical axis. And this LM, this is the important part, that's for linear model, linear model regression. So so I'm going to do a linear regression between the OD number and the average hemocytometer concentration. In theory, this should be a, a line, right? So we, what I give to every the group is I do a, a dilution of those uh, uh, yeast culture, and every group measure the OD and then count it using hemocytometer. So if everyone done everything exactly the same, it should be a straight line. So. Well, let's first uh, plot and run linear regression. Um, it's green dot on the right. Uh, and this is also important. Summary, this is a command to show the report of the result of linear regression. And you need to learn how to read this. In Excel, you can also add a trend line for this. And you will, uh, there are two parameters we need to know. One is called a p-value. At the bottom, this is 0.55. And then there's another one called uh, R squared value. This one is 0.09. So mm -hmm. both uh, R squared uh, evaluate how good that straight line is. So th the perfect score should be 1.0. So 0.01 means it's not linear. And 0.05 is also means it's not significant. A good p-value should be 0 0.05 and uh, smaller. So should be smaller than one out of 20, 0 0.05, one out of 20. So, so 
And if we put the result on the line, you will see the result like this. So that's the class result. So it, it's not a line because there seem to be a two branch of the tree. So you had the, that's why it's not a line. So and <coughs> the uh, so here R square. What's R square is again? The point nine. It should be between zero and one. One mm. one point zero means a hundred percent linear. Zero means it's not linear at all. Mm. P value if P is smaller, the P value the better for your theory. Yeah. So P value should be small. R square should be closer to one for perfect uh, linear regression. And if you understand that too, you can answer one of the question in, in exam. Yeah. So we need to know how to get to that. But yes, is it possible to have like written instructions? Because you're moving really fast. And uh, I'm recording this anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, is uh, it possible that we just do this in Okay, so um, this is just another uh, uh, a plot. This one is just to change the scale. So, uh, in the exam, as, as <laughs> just as this exercise, the R code will be provided for you. The data will be provided for you. But it's in zip file. You extract it and run the code, and then look at the results. Do the same thing. Yeah, exactly the same thing. Okay. Um, second, I'm going to analyze the plate counting result, the CFU result. That's in the uh, different data file called plate counting CFU. Okay, we've done this. Uh, the plate, if, uh, if we click on the right, that's the Excel data file for the uh, CFU counting. Uh, some of, because some of the plate, uh, some of you count, uh, when dilution comes, uh, uh, there will be some of the doesn't have data. Uh, I just put a, a symbol called NA, not available. That's basically our studio to deal with the missing data right, so it's counted as the missing data uh, okay once it we can also calculate the, the serial dilution one you, you need to remember how much uh, volume we put on the plate we put 100 microliter on the plate so that's why I divided by 100 that's 100 microliter and then we should turn back the dilution ratio and so divided by 100 that's the plate concentration of the CFU per microliter times dilution ratio that goes back to the original one. And Is run that. that like when you said it was like something like a hundred fold or whatever. Right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then we calculate uh, the average of that. Okay, so this time if I look at the... Right, so... That's the sample uh, 124789. That's the sixth strain we use. That's the average uh, CFU uh, colony forming unit per microliter. And um, you can also see the result is like a hundred fold difference here. So yeah. it's also uh, oh, quite varies quite a bit uh, from group to group. Sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Uh, 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 well, but so we have the hemocytometer data, we have CFU data. We want to put these two data together using a, a command called merge. And we can merge that because they have the same uh, sample ID. So once we merge that, I put it into a new data file called all TB, basically for everything TB for table. This is just a big table. Uh, it's actually not big, but it contains all the results. So once we merge this file has uh, average hemocytometer concentration that's basically the cell number per microliter also the average CFU concentration that's the CFU per microliter and then we also have the optical density measure so we have three measure of concentration in the yeast cultures and we can compare whether these three measures are consistent or not in a perfect situation all three if we do a, a linear regression between any two pair, it should be a straight line. Uh, 
It's actually uh, uh, in one of them it does. So that's the question I ask you to put for the lab report. The first one calculate CIPU per micron. We, we, we already did that. The second one uh, plot optical density versus the CFU apply linear regression and then discuss the result. So that's the second part. Highlight that running up. That's the optical density, y axis, CFU, and the uh, linear regression at the bottom says p value is 0.49, about 0.5. R square point one two, so this is also uh, not linear at all. So that's you basically write report and try try to discuss possible reason why that's not the case. Uh, why was why is one equal to? Sorry, what? Than one? R square should be if it's one point zero, that would be a perfect yeah. linear model. Here is just point one two, so. The second one, we are going to plot uh, optical density with uh, 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 that's a CFU cell number. Uh, actually, we already did that before, but let's just do it again. So uh, again, this is point five five and R squared. So yeah. the last one, uh, although it varies between group to group, but we also want to compare the the CFU versus the hemocytometer candy. This is actually uh, very interesting. You will see this is actually more or less online. Uh, I have a p-value of 0 0.015, which is smaller than 0 0.05, and r squared 0.8. It's actually it's pretty good for biology. It's the closest so, yet. So, so even though it varies between group, but for every group, the hemocytometer counting and the plate counting are actually quite consistent. That's a very interesting indicator. I, I can kind of guess why that's the case. Uh, it means for uh, even though from group to group the result is not repeated, but every group itself is repeating its own <laughs> result. But why that's the case, you may want to discuss some possible reasons. Uh, so, okay. So that's, uh, let me uh, stop the recording. Uh,